6, uh, 2016 water uh, in Sewer Commission uh, Board Selectman meeting. Uh, roll call, everyone's present. Uh, reading some of the minutes from uh, December 16, 2015 regular session. So Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. You want to get in there before me today, huh, sir? Uh, let's see. Can't do a public hearing yet. Can't do a green course yet. No business. Uh, concurrence and informs of Robert Chisholm 91 Hillside Drive to the Council on Aging effective January 8, 2016 for a term to expire on April 30, 2019. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Concurrence and informs. Can I just ask a question? You want to go quick? Sure. Was he coming in, Nancy, or anything? He was not coming in. Before um, Jim, uh, when Jim was here, he did interview him, um, and he recommended him for appointment. He's okay. the heavy set guy, right? The yes. spoke at town meeting? Yes. 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 Okay. He's actually right. pretty good about what yeah. he Just so I have an idea. Cool. We also have one other vacancy. Um, oh, we still have one? We have, yeah, that's we have one more vacancy, and we have... Um, couple of applications that have come in, so we'll be filling that hopefully shortly. Okay. Uh, Concurrent to the appointment of Louis Pepe, uh, 181 Fairbank Street, to the position of Assistant Building Inspector, effective January 18, 2016, return to expire April 30, 2017, to be compensated $25 per inspection. So, so second. second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what's essentially going to happen with the building inspector is that I understand Chris is leaving. We're just going to rely on multiple building inspectors, multiple assistant building inspectors. We currently have two um, assistant building inspectors um, and we are appointing. Chris has offered to come and be an assistant and this gentleman from town who is retiring from Shrewsbury, that's the job that Chris is taking. He has offered help the town out as well. This should be probably a really quick turnaround. Um, Chris leaves um, the last, his last day is the end of the month and our deadline for applications is that following Monday, so. Now, Chris is the building inspector, but he's also the zoning enforcement officer. Correct. So, how's it, we're not gonna have a full-time person. We've never had a full-time Or, and what was Chris, 25? He was 32. 32, so. When just a million people here, something like the Wayne's Weaponry situation happens, it's okay, $25 per inspection. Who's going to handle things of that nature for zoning enforcement actions? We actually put together, Chris put together a menu of different things like that. And if, if it were something recent, Cheryl would give a call to Chris. He said he exchanged emails, he said he's available after 5 o'clock, he's offered to come in on Saturdays. Um, so he's going to make himself available, and as I said, we're expecting a pretty quick turnaround on this. Can Plus, I this is a, a slow time for building. That's so what he said. It's a very slow time right now for it's building. It's just for the possibility of some zoning right. issue. Correct. Um, question to follow up with that. So we have um, the job has been posted. It has been. It's okay. on the MMA website. I've gotten a couple of inquiries. I already got an, a resume. And what's the deadline for the applications? The last Monday of the month. 25th of January, yes. the date that he's been appointed. So Correct. if Mr. Purcell's not back by then, because we don't know, could this board then take over interview and mm -hmm. appoint somebody, or is it only the interim town administrator to appoint? It's, it's the job of the town administrator to appoint. He's the appointing authority for the position. We so we can't we do it? No. We're going to address that issue in a little while. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Um, okay. on the appointment of Crystal Lund, Shrewsbury, Mass. I'm oh, sorry. All in favor. Aye. 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 on the appointment of Crystal Lund, <coughs> Shrewsbury, Mass. The position of Assistant Building Inspector, effective January 25th, 2016, to the time to expire April 30th, 2017, to be compensated $25 per inspection. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. So let's go back. Uh, Mr. Shibley. Craig Shibley, uh, come on up. State your name and address, please. 
My name is Craig Shibley from Two Lost Oak Road. Okay, and well, what can we do for you? Okay, well, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to speak before the board and a happy new year to all of you. Thank you. Um, it's nice to be here. It was kind of a journey to get here, but I'm glad I'm given a chance to speak. Um, I would like to address two issues. Uh, one is uh, the town of West Boylston's involvement with a law enforcement council that's known as the Central Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council, the acronym SEMLEC. And before I begin with, with what I would like to discuss very briefly before the board, I'm just wondering, does, uh, I'd like to hear from the board and what their, what their understanding of this law enforcement entity is. I guess I uh, all I know is it's evolved about 50 or 60 of the, uh, the police departments. They get together and for uh, drug task force units and stuff, things like that. Is my understanding. Okay, that's about you don't know. I have no idea. I, I I personally don't think it's our place. I think we hire the chief of police to look at this kind of stuff. It's not the place of the board of selectmen to to know that kind of stuff. I mean, I, that's my personal opinion. I mean, I know about it. I know what it's about, but I don't. I don't think it's our place. I don't think it's our place to really put these two concerns on the on the agenda. I think I'm looking through some of the emails. If if I would say that you should speak to the chief about this stuff, but I mean, I guess you can go on and tell us what you have to say. But I think the chief is the guy that answers these questions, not us. Well, why don't you tell well, us your that, yeah? I'd appreciate it. I can I get in the, sure. We'll, we'll move forward from there. That's fine. Um, you know, the reason I, I didn't go before the chief is, is simply because I do believe it's actually a town issue since town money is helping fund this organization. SEMLEC, for the uh, Board of Selectmen's understanding, is, uh, is a nonprofit law enforcement entity that was formed in 2002. And if I may interrupt you, can you give us your background? In, 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 do you have a background in law enforcement? I don't know how that's relative, but no, I do not oh, have you a... you asked me how it's relative to me, so I'm going to ask that, you... I'm, I'm not here to be antagonistic, Mr. McCormick. <coughs> no, I do not have a background in law enforcement, sir. Okay. Very good. May I proceed, Mr. Hadley? Yep. Thank you so much. <coughs> um, so, I, I have been doing some... Um, looking into some of these law enforcement councils on a particular project that I'm working on. And um, SEMLEC obviously is, is one of those entities. There are actually nine such entities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And um, what, what is disconcerting to me, Mr. Hadley and board, is that uh, this organization, like I said, was formed in 2002. It had a particular FEIN, a federal identification number, which I'm sure, Mr. Crowley, your background is accounting, if I'm not correct, sir. Mm -hmm. you'd, be very, you'd be very familiar with this. It had an FEIN of 04. 700 digits, not really germane to the discussion. It turns out that though that FEIN number is not legitimate. And only recently was this organization, was this organization properly constructed. So my concern is this, is that taxpayer money does go to fund this. Yeah, and so there is an appropriation obviously that this town makes and the, and the police chief does present to the board of the finance committee, which then is approved at annual town meeting. I, to my knowledge, I don't believe it's a line item. I just, I believe it's just a, I'm not sure how it's actually allocated, but money does go because there's an annual membership fee that is required of all, all um, municipal police departments, as well as a couple of other law enforcement entities here in, West, in Worcester County that then feed into this organization. So that's where I think it's a, it's more of a town issue than specifically just a police department issue. Um, that being said, as you'd mentioned, Mr. Hadley, um, that you were aware of a, at least they had a tactical unit, a SWAT unit, which is true. They do have a SWAT unit. Most of these, majority of these LECs do. But what I found and, and, and what I, I'm having a difficult time understanding is that according to its bylaws, it actually has an array of different units, everything from a tactical canine unit to a tactical emergency medical services team to a crisis negotiations team and others. Furthermore, it says in its articles of organization that the executive officer of each member agency must promulgate his own protocols with respect to calling out these specific, specific tactical units. To my knowledge, the police department doesn't have any protocol in place. Furthermore, 
as a result of the lack of protocol, these varying myriad of, of tactical units that it has that nobody really knows what they're all about because I've tried and others have tried to actually get this information and it's a, it's a rather hardy stone wall to say the least. I'm asking respectfully that until, until this board can understand what exactly certain members of this police department are doing, to my knowledge, according to the chief, only one, one member of the West Boylston Police Department actually is a member of at least the SWAT team. Now, I do not know if any other members are involved in this myriad of other teams, but there's obviously liability issues that I'm not sure I've been told through different sources that do not exist in terms of, I know there's, I think each town must take out a million dollar insurance policy uh, upon entering into an agreement to, uh, to become a member of SEMLEC. But beyond that, I'm not sure what other type of liability insurance that the town has decided to, to take out or should take out uh, in order to protect uh, the fiduciary interest of taxpayers in this community should, God forbid, that entity be sued for any type of potential wrongdoing in, in the course of, of executing its, its line of action or duty under the color of uh, law. So I'm, I'm asking this board, first and foremost, given the fact that this entity for over a decade has essentially existed in limbo. And as a result of that, Mr. Crowley would, would certainly uh, have a better understanding, given his background, is that they only existed in the eyes of the Secretary of State's office. There are no financial records otherwise that exist with them. So for a decade, this entity that received untold amounts of money in federal, in federal uh, Department of Justice grant monies, Nobody knows how much they got. Nobody knows where the money is, if any. Can I just address that for a minute? Yeah. I, I want, I'm not going to speak to the insurance policy piece. I'm not going to speak to what they do. As far as what you're saying about an EIN, uh, that's irrelevant to the, to the situation. They're either a 501, you said they were a nonprofit. I'm assuming they're a 501c3. If they're a 501c3, they have to have filed what's called a Form 1023 to get granted that status. If they're getting funds from the federal government, they're required to be audited. So I don't have any of the info. I'm just taking you for your word. I don't have any of the information, but what you're saying doesn't pass the smell test. You can't, the, the federal government, and I've done federal government auditing before for community health centers. And I've investigated it thoroughly, the, the, too. But the federal government doesn't just write grants. You, ha you have no choice but to provide your audited financials if you're getting federal government grants to, to provide the audited financials. Uh, and I'm with Mr. Rucho on this. I don't, think that the, and I don't think that this is a board of selectmen issue. I think this is a police issue and potentially something that might need to go to our town council. But the things you're saying, uh, I, I'm not questioning whether you're, you're telling the truth or not, but the things you're saying just based on my background, don't make sense that you know the you you can't get federal grants without having the EIN, without having a a 501c. I'm assuming you said nonprofit. I'm assuming it's a 501c3. It could be under a separate chapter of the Internal Revenue Code, a different 501 chapter. Uh, there's it's it's C uh, one through 17. So uh, what you're saying on its face, if they're an uh, entity getting federal money. It, it's a near impossibility for that to be the case. A short response then, Mr. Crowley. Historically speaking, one only has to look back to 2002, between 2001 and actually, excuse me, 2000 and 2004. There are a number of LECs that are operating illegally. The Department of Justice got involved and there, in this state of Massachusetts. You can look and research that. As for that being an improbability, sure it's an improbability, but in a perfect world, sure what you say should exist. But I'm telling you, if, if this community were to take the time to research, this is why I think this is actually an important issue to this town, because this town was a charter member of this law enforcement council. They were one of the, the original signing members of this council that was formed in 2002. So I respectfully understand what you're saying, and I agree with what you're saying in theory, but the reality and the facts speak a very different story, and that's why I'm concerned, and that's why I'm here before you today that I think you'd, you would reference the idea of maybe your legal counsel looking into this. 
It wouldn't take much time to, to, to look into it and to affirm what I'm telling you, which should raise a lot of red flags. It doesn't pass the smell test. Sure, it doesn't pass the smell test, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. And I'll do respect. Fair enough. Okay. Mr. Shibley, can I just ask, are you just coming in front of us to inform us what? In, inform, and I was, I was asking respectfully that until this board, one, has more clarity, because to be quite frank, I'm very surprised that only, I don't have my glasses, is it Rucho? Is that how you pronounce your name, sir? That Mr. Rucho is the only one that has some degree of familiarity with this law enforcement council that, as of late, has been quite active in this very community with its SWAT team, at least. So, if nothing else, I would urge this Board of Selectmen to, to become more informed. But more importantly, I think it goes beyond becoming more informed. It actually becomes, it involves garnering a, a, a firmer understanding, and until that understanding is reached, that, that you suspend temporarily all involvement with this law enforcement council that would not have any detrimental effect. Be, for, the simp, for the simple fact, for the simple fact, for the simple fact that and any type of call out that would be required could either be augmented one by state police in its stop unit, which is its version of a tactical SWAT team, or the Worcester North County Drug, Tax, Tax, Drug Task Force. So there would not be any harm or any type of concern of safety of people in this community if in fact this, this Board of Selectmen took under advisement to possibly suspend involvement with this entity until you actually know what's going on in it. That's all I'm asking in that regard. All right. Okay. So and can I, I did have another point though. And it, this was about, there were two things I was, I was being allowed to discuss. Can we make it short, because make it short, because this is, really this is nothing, this is something to do with the, the chief of police that he be, he'll be handling this, but what's the other point about? Okay. Just, just for the record, then, the reason I didn't want to talk to the chief of police, because yeah. I did, I have yeah. talked to him before and he's been less than forthcoming. Yeah. So it's a more appropriate venue. Okay. That's fine. The other one is directly involved with this community too, and I would hope that the Board of Selectmen would have interest in it, and that involves the West Boylston Police Association and its other entity called the Massachusetts Coalition of Police Local 172, and that would be its union, okay? This, this was brought to my attention through a different individual, uh, but it was germane enough that I thought I would bring it up. And that is, in 1970-something um, or 80-something, this West Boylston Police Association, Benevolent Association, was supposedly created according to public record. In 2008 or so, around there roughly, it, had its, it, it was, it was uh, revoked, its business operations was revoked by the Secretary of State's office. They then filed a certificate of revival in 2009. My concern, and this is just a, uh, I'm, I'm perplexed to be quite honest when this information was pre presented to me, is that prior to 2009, it had a FEIN number of a 27 dash whatever, nine digits. It then assumed a number of 04 numbers, not relevant. But what's interesting or what's peculiar is this West Boylston Police Association, Benevolent Association, has the very same federal identification number of the police union. So you have a 501c3 and a 501c10, I believe it is. So you have a union nonprofit organization and a 501c charitable organization sharing the same FEIN. You can't have that. Okay. Um, so this is a legal issue, though. Okay. We will take it up. Do you understand the magnitude of that, though? Because if, in fact, they're sharing the same pool of money, once again, you have, you have. Well, hold, hold on. You're, you're taking a big, huge leap to say that they have. I'm saying if. I'm saying again, they are. Sharing a pool, the same pool of money. Well, if, no. <laughs> if, if they have the same FBIN. Shibley, no. I, are, you, are, you, are you saying it's not true then, Mr. No. Crowley? Well, no. What I'm saying is that we've, we've, you gave us, we gave you some time. You, you said we'll, we'll take it from here. That's what I'm saying. Thank you so much. Can I expect yeah. can I expect some follow up though, Mr. Hadley, as in terms of what you might take from here? We will uh, be in touch. If we have if we have something we need to follow up with you, we will certainly let you know. Appreciate your time, Mr. Okay. Hadley. I, I Mr. Just, might just my one question is. Sure. I'm just. I guess maybe I'm just inquisitive. What is your background? What? I don't understand why you're here. Are you just here as a good citizen? Trying to protect the town of West Boylston? I mean, 
Are you being sarcastic or are you being serious? I'm, I'm curious. I couldn't tell by your tone. I don't know. How long have you been? Like I've only lived here two years. I've just lived just two years, sir. Two years. Okay. Two years. Yeah. And so I just want to I just want to try to understand what you why you're here. Uh, I, I, I understand what you've told us. Okay. Okay, and we'll sure. look into that. I, I hope so. I hope so. We'll look into it. Sure. Um, but why why didn't you go to the town administrator? And talk to him rather I, than I, him here first, I guess. Sure. I, I, I'd gladly share that story with you. I, I reached out to the town, the temporary interim town administrator, right. Mr. Purcell, I believe his name is, mm -hmm. I think on four occasions. I think the, I, I don't, I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Nancy. Nancy. Okay. M N Nancy maybe can correct me, but I believe it's four times that I reached out to him over a course of over a month, Mr. McCormick. He ignored three of the outreaches. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, <clears throat> I think he was less than honest about the outreaches. Not until I sent him an email calling out his lack of professionalism did he then respond to an email. So I take quite a lot of umbrage in the fact that it takes a, a, a resident of this community four attempts and only raising the level of disbelief to such a point where I was calling out his professionalism that he would respond. And then he said he would, he, he would meet, and then he threw in the fact that I had to meet with the chief. I told him I didn't want to meet with the chief. I, wanted, I, I would meet with him. But all of a sudden, it seemed like, in all due respect, Mr. McCormick, unless it's general protocol, and I'm new to this town, so maybe you can enlighten me, but if every citizen has to go through some sort of shakedown to get before this board of selectmen, that's not an open and transparent democracy. And if, and if that is not the case, then I suspect there's something else going on here. I don't yeah, know I what. Yeah, I think we're all, we have a 506CB. I have a it's lot not, of, it's I not have a, a couple of companies I have all different. We certainly don't have a shakedown procedure, but. Well, then I don't understand why then it took me five attempts. Yeah. Well, we'll take, uh, so well, so we'll take the only thing I could say to that is I think it's a waste of time for you to be here. You, you're fine, you can come in front of this board, but we'd like to bring someone in front of the board if we can answer their questions. We can't. Can't answer it. Well, I didn't know Mr. Purcell wasn't going to be here. Otherwise, oh, we could have rescheduled. He, should, he would have No, I don't, I don't know if he could answer the questions. I think that I'm sure the chief is involved in the police department and the fire department and the well, DPW. They're all involved with different organizations and groups that we... Well, he could have been here. I included him in the initial email as a courtesy. And Mr. Okay. Purcell knows that, and so does Nancy. And the so, only thing I would say... So I don't know why he's not here, then. Financial matter... That's not a financial matter to the town of West Boylston. Those are both, those aren't connected to the town of West Boylston at all. So you, would, you wouldn't be the least bit concerned in terms of any type of judiciary alleged impropriety potentially if in fact there are, t there are two entities operating under a single shell even though they, they well, legally can't. That doesn't disconcern you? you said it's a financial matter to the town. I don't, I don't think it is. I mean, that's my opinion. Oh, that's really? my opinion. It's, it's that's, a, a union that's, that's not Connected. Owned, connected to the town. It's the, 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 red, the employees of the town, and it's a nonprofit that's not connected to the town. It doesn't, but, but doesn't the, fall but under this, our purview. But members of those police are, are soliciting donations for, to, from residents of this town. Doesn't that discon, isn't that disconcerting at some level, Mr. Crowley? It, right, it, that's like saying anybody, that we need to be concerned with any nonprofit that solicits from any resident of our town. No, these are law enforcement people, so it, sh it should rise to a higher level, Mr. Crowley. And I, I, think, I, I think, think you're more educated enough to understand. I, I think we've talked enough. Was, Just yeah. one last, Good. one quick question. Yes. I'd like to know why or how you decided to look into this information. I'm, I'm just curious. Like, not, I, I can't think of a real reason. I'm, I'm trying to understand why you would be looking into something of this nature like is this your background are you an auditor and you just were looking at the town i'm just curious as how this information came to be and then what made you decide to look into it as much detail i'm just trying to get my head wrapped around the, the process like i said uh miss bon bonson bonson miss bonson the issue of the 501c3 with respect to the police department those two that information was provided to me i wasn't looking for that so okay are you an auditor fine. of some sort no i'm not no. okay no, not an auditor okay thank you but thank I you very do, much i do know auditors though thank you mr shibley thank you so much Appreciate for your time it. mr hadley look forward to hearing from the board okay. yeah.
All right. We're going to do a public hearing. Uh, public uh, notice is hereby given conformity of the uh, requirements of the general bylaws, Town of West Boylston, Article 23, public hearing. Notice uh, the Board of Selectmen will meet on Wednesday, January 6, 2016, at 7.15, yep. for the purpose of considering amendments to the policy one, E1, sexual harassment policy, and policy E4, non-discrimination policy. The meeting will be held in the Board of Selectmen's meeting room 140, Worcester Street, West Boston, Mass. All right. Okay, back in December, on December 11th, we had an MCAD training. It was put on by Maya, Bob Marinelli, our loss control gentleman came out. And um, these were two, policies, two of the policies that we reviewed. Um, they have now expanded the protective classes. So we are going to edit both of these to include the um, expanded <coughs> version. And with Maya, if we et amend these, um, we can send them in and we are eligible under our Maya rewards to get a percentage point each towards our um, public officials liability line item. So this will um, result in Maya rewards and plus give us updated policies so that when we um, put our new employee packages together, we're in compliance with everything. Excellent. So we need to vote on that, I assume. You need to, um, you need to vote to, you need to ask if anybody has any comments oh, first. Any, um, oh yeah, we have to make any comments from the public. And to vote to close the public hearing, is that correct? So moved. Second? Anybody second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we need a motion to? Motion to approve the changes. Do we have to do them separately or do we do them together? You can do them together. So Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. From uh, Greencrest. 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 Yeah, I'm John Dunner. Okay, come on up. Time. Perfect. Uh, Greencrest Partners LLC requests for license to be a collector of second-hand mm -hmm. item in a one donation box permit for 21 West Boston Street, which is the gas station, I think, isn't it? The BP. It's the BP gas station, okay. that is correct. Okay. Um, I'm representing my boss, Scott Zunick and Eric Green. I'm John Dunn, I'm the manager of Greencrest Partners. And we have a box there and um, we're notified by town officials that you guys are implementing permits for our collection bins and we just want to comply and um, go ahead and see if we can get a permit for that one location that we have at that BP gas station. Do you have everything you need in there? We do. Thank you. I, I do have a question. How often do you come to empty that? Um, <coughs> every two weeks, unless there's a problem, the owner will give us a call and we'll be there within 48 hours. Okay. The reason we implemented these changes is because we had a lot of people throwing trash around the, around the receptacle and stuff like that. So we're trying to make everything clean up and it's worked out pretty well. We've got a, in the last three or four months, it's, Clean up the town quite a bit. Absolutely, I agree with that. And that's why if there is a problem on the location, the owner is to give us a call and we'll be there within 48 hours. Because it does happen, because some people don't listen. We put signs, don't leave any trash out there. But people want to do what they want to do, and we've got to handle some problems, and do you know we understand. You, do you know if you've had um, issues out here before? Not here, no. Places like Brockton, we have. Okay. For sure. Thank you. No problem. You have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, consider acceptance of $1,193.59 in donations from the Public for loss of damaged books and other materials, donations to the uh, use of printers and copiers and donations given to the support general needs of the library on behalf of the town. So moved. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're going to review wetland bylaws, uh, wetland bylaws and uh, vote to send the bylaw to me. This is something uh, I've been involved in. We've had uh, some issues with the bylaw, and the state's going to mandate some bylaw changes, and we want to just get ahead of them so we can actually enforce the bylaws that we have. And we brought it to town meeting last year, and there was a couple of issues we had to resolve, and we have resolved them. And once we get approval from this board, we can bring it to the bylaw committee uh, next month, and then uh, they will vote on it. I can probably answer anybody's any questions. Just off the top of your head, do you know what the, the change is? It's just mostly enforcement. Um, if someone right now, if they're dumping something in the river or something like that, we have no way of stopping them, no way to enforce them. Like you can't do a hundred dollar day fine now and stuff like that. This is gonna give us some enforcement action available to us. Okay, if, was that the issue? I remember yeah. um, at town floor yeah. that that was- We couldn't enforce it. There were some vague laws and yes. stuff like that. We had nothing we could enforceable. Thank you. Any other questions? Do you have a motion? Do we know, I motion that we accept the changes. Second. Are we oh. send it to the bylaw committee? Yes. Okay, so. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, time on fulfilling the position of DBW <coughs> director. Okay. What am I doing here? DBW director. Oh, oh yes. yes um, sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Looking at something. The client. Um, and with my ability is uh, this electronic stuff. It's pretty slow. Um, <clears throat> I just want to know what our timeline is on looking for this uh, permanent position of the DPW director. I think we, it's time to get going. Um, Anthony left when? In June, maybe? I was guessing it was right. Other than that, because I was on the board when when he left. I don't think it was so July. July. I it was July. Yeah, July. It was right after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what it could have been? It was, it was in June. June. I Sometimes it. June or July. Yeah. Yeah. This so summer. anyway, it's been six months. We're yeah. going into seven months now. We don't have a permanent DPW director. We have not. I guess we got a um, recommendation on how to revamp our DPW. Um, it must have been in another report that I didn't see, but um, <clears throat> we did receive um, something. So I, I don't know. I just think it's time that we put together an, an app. I mean, a posting job. A ad. Posting, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Sure. Thank you for your um, help. I need it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so a posting, so we can get it out, get some uh, resumes in. Hopefully, by the time we get all those in, we might have actually a new um, town administrator here that could actually start the process. Sure. And, and do some interviews and decide who he wants to. Um, she wants to be a new TBW. When you had requested this item to be put on the agenda, I went through the Mass Municipal Association website and I pulled different ads that they had. Um, and then I pulled the one that we used the last couple of times. Um, what I could do is make packets for everyone and you can look at what we have and you know if, if there's something else that you think should be included, you could put it in and maybe by the next meeting, we'll have a final for you to review and approve. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Nance, do we have a job description? We do. Um, could you put that with it? Because if there's any changes in that job description before it is sent out, I'd sure. like to review it. I just want to say, I th personally, I think that uh, I know there's some changes to the bylaws in it, but uh, Mr. Kittredge, I, I think it made, it made the biggest improvement in, in the DPW in the last seven or eight years, and that's something he should be considered for this appointment. I know it's, we're asking for professional engineer in our bylaws. I'm sure it's something we could change if we wanted to, but I just think the rest of the board should consider Mr. Kittredge also. Um, if I could just ask, is that set by bylaw or by charter? Is what set? The description of his job, it has to be an engineer. Is that a bylaw in town or? or is it a, I don't I believe it's a bylaw. I thought it was, it was approved by the town. I thought it was a bylaw too. Why don't I pull, pull all of that and I'll. I'll so um, if that's the case, the only way we could 
change oh, that is we would need to change the bylaw. So then that would even put it off even till till May, after May. May or June. Well, we could also approve Mr. Kidrid as an, an interim until. I believe it. I believe it's the job description. I don't believe it's the bylaw. I don't think the bylaw tells you what the DPW will be made of. It formed the DPW, um, but I, I don't. I thought it was a bylaw. I thought Leon always said it was a bylaw. But at any rate, hmm. it, not to, um, uh, I'm trying to cause a problem, but I think we should be discussing anybody in particular. Okay. Because I'm going to have Joe Schmoll, then I think okay. he should be the guy. Okay. That hasn't even applied yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So, no problem. I just, nothing personal, Mike. No, oh, I, I agree we're going to move forward. And I think the reason, Mr. McCormick, and I know we, we, a few of us agree, or maybe all of us agree, that that didn't help. But we were waiting for that study. I agree. That's why and I that, But that didn't even answer our question in regards to this. The study didn't help so. anybody. Except the company that did it. Yeah, yeah they got 9,000 bucks. So, Nancy, if you can find out if, if it's Yes, I'll line, get all that ready for you. And I, I would like to see that. Certainly. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, that's it. Meeting invitations and announcements Thursday, January 7th, 6 30 p.m., Selectman's Meeting Room, informational meeting for sidewalk improvement project. And then uh, Selectman's reports. Mr. Um, I don't have any report. Oh, yes. Um, we are still continuing our. Um, Fire Department union negotiations, and I believe we have a, an executive session that I can uh, fill you in more on that. Um, the only thing I have that we are um, continuing to work with the school on the teachers' uh, contracts, Excellent. and that's moving forward. Um, I have something regarding the DCR. Uh, there's uh, several basketball leagues in town. They practice Major Edwards practice at uh, the hillside on Boylston. We do a lot of joint stuff with them. There are not enough courts for the practice facilities. I reached out. I got the uh, DCR directors, area director, John Scanlon. 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 Uh, got his name and number. I forwarded on to one of the coaches uh, because it's my understanding that the Beeman Street property has a uh, facility and the answer that we got whether the coach got was, even though it's the Department of Conservation and Recreation, the facility is not open to the public. So I'd like to, uh, as a board, reach out to both uh, Senator Chandler and Representative O'Day uh, and ask them for their assistance in working with the DCR. This, I don't see any reason why they're in our town to use our services, our ambulances, our police, our fire, why we can't, why they can't work with us and, and the entities within town. Uh, to allow us to use their facilities. It's not open to the public. Is it open to? I, I, it's I, it's been brought up. We have you. We used it in the past, and it's been brought up when he's at our meetings before. And he says the 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 room is used for storage now. It's not a basketball court anymore. It's in rough shape. Um, that was his answer. So I mean, I I have no problem going to the center, but I think this they have full control of the building and. We've asked, and we have used it years ago, but I think it's pretty. But I think it's pretty rough. And he said it's used for storage. The building's too small for what they need, and they're using it. Whatever. I mean, can't hurt to ask. That's right. When do we get the rules? We can ask. I agree. Do we he, need a he's, vote? He's, he's well, let us, once he's scheduled again to come, Mr. Scandal, he comes every six, six months. months. February. So. He comes in February and August every year. Oh, so. But actually, yeah. he doesn't. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Sorry for interrupting, but on Tuesday and on February, he gives us a written report. On August, he comes in reports in person. Just, I mean, I just say we can reach out and ask him the question and then get the answer, and then maybe I, we can send it on to the senator and the, the, to the state rep. But that's fine. I don't care what we do. Um, I, I have something about the uh, town administrator. We need to uh, appoint Nancy as. What would you call it, the acting town administrator? I, I so believe you, you that's the, what we did the last time. So yes. You have the right to sign and uh, work for the town. It's well, I, would, yeah. I, I agree, but I would also like to reach out to Mr. Purcell and see where that stands. That's I, I, I agree 100%. That's, I think that's as important as appointing someone in because if, if 
We can't have two people appointed to I don't think that can do the same thing. His Our contract candidate. actually ended the end of December. Okay, so we don't so we don't have a we don't have anybody. Right so now. that's why we need. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion to do what? Point Nancy. Nancy. Is Sure. Sure. Acting town administrator, I would assume, because we don't. If we, it's contract ended, is the interim? Is it interim? Sorry, right. I haven't even talked to you about it. He's okay. interim. It's called interim town administrator. And remember how we we took his contract, and originally it was a shorter version. Then we extended the contract, and we expend, we extended it through November and December, and then he went to two days a week. Um, and I would. But what make a motion that we appoint interim or acting? It would be interim. I would appoint. I make a motion we appoint Nancy as an interim, as the interim town administrator, because we look like we're maybe kind of on the final leg of looking for maybe getting somebody, um, and and then we have to figure out a compensation package, obviously, and maybe John and yeah, and if something you don't, if you feel you need further help, you will let us know. If you. You need backup. Can, right? Yeah. I do have a question. I think it's important, as Mr. Rucho said, that we at least get some kind of idea from Mr. Purcell, as in I cannot return, because I don't think it's fair to Nancy to put all this on her. And if we think it's going to be another three months and he's not able right. to come back, then maybe we have right. to do something else. I agree 100%. We, I just want something for the next couple of weeks to yeah. bring us over. Yeah. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. And maybe, maybe John and I mean I'm not. And somebody else, whoever else wants we'll to work a negotiate. Package. Yeah. Right. I think we have. I, I, I think we already have something in place that we could probably just put her into it because, um, I, I, I think we could do talk about it, but I think just, we have something yeah, in place. I now. think it's going to take more than a couple of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Figure out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You agree? Thank I you agree. For stepping up and doing everything you've done, in, including this, Nance. This, you know, we're one town. We're all working together. We're going to get this done. All right, Kevin, want to read the uh, executive? We have future agenda items. Oh, oh. So where we did this? I thought we, we did select. No, no oh, we did select. Future agenda. You know, I have something written down, but I can't. I don't know what it says. Can I read it? Well, I didn't get to finish writing it. Now I don't know what it was. Um, but. Go ahead. go ahead and you guys go and I'll try to think of what I'm it is. Trying to think about it. Go I'm on. all set at this time. I have nothing just time. Good. I'm all set too. I'm all set. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, what the heck was it? I, I don't know. I'll, um, He's going to think about it the minute we adjourn, probably. <laughs> it doesn't, it can't be all that important. I do remember it. Well, I can't think. All right, consider, um, I make a motion we move into executive session under the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Part 3, uh, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. This is fine negotiations. I do. Second. Mr. McCormick? Yes. Ms. Bonson? Yes. Mr. Hadley? Yes. Mr. Crowley? Yes. Mr. Rucho? Yes. Can we go? We will not be returning to uh, open session. Motion to adjourn? So no, we, don't we make that in there? Yeah. We adjourn out of executive Whatever. session, Fine. right? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Wait, it says, it says we will reconvene. Yeah, but why, I don't, that, why would we? Because we? we have to sign a document. Nancy, we we reconvene because we have to sign. It says we I will. Thought we won't do it until next meeting. No, we need to. Well, we can wait till next meeting. It doesn't really matter. You can do what you want. You can wait till the next meeting because we still have time. Just yeah, plenty of time. Yes. Yeah. We'll do it next meeting. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. We're what the hell did you just on send? I got here. Send to. Send T I T I something.